In this video, I will give you a simplified explanation what WebRTC is and how it is used. I have created a proof of concept using MEM as a signaling implementation for WebRTC. WebRTC, which stands for Web Real-Time Communication, was announced in 2011 and is an HTML5 specification supported by Google, Mozilla, and Opera, amongst others. WebRTC provides browsers and devices with direct data, voice and video peer-to-peer -peer communication without the need to install plugins or download native apps. WebRTC is supported by most modern browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Microsoft Edge. WebRTC uses the following main component JavaScript APIs. RTC peer connection to set up and create a peer-to-peer -peer connection. RTC data channel to bidirectional transfer arbitrary data peer-to-peer. -peer. Every data channel is associated with an RTC peer connection and each peer connection can have one or more data channels. Media stream, more commonly known by its JavaScript function getUserMedia. It gives access to a stream object that represents video and audio streams. In this picture you see two peers. The media stream gives access to a stream object that represents video and audio streams. The RTC peer connection set up and create a peer-to-peer -peer connection. And the RTC data channel to bidirectional transfer arbitrary data peer-to-peer. If two peers need to communicate directly with each other, they need to know each other's public IP address and port. Often, a direct connection is not possible because the peers uses a router with a built-in firewall that uses network address translation. In this example, peer A wants to communicate with peer B. To make this happen, they need to know each other's public IP address. This is peer A, private network and this is the private IP address of this computer. But the public IP address of this computer is this one. The Interactive Connectivity Establishment Framework, ICE for short, deals with the process of connecting peers through nets. A STON server allows the peers to discover their public IP address, port and the type of net they are behind. This information is used to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection. A media stream will flow directly between the peers. In most cases, approximately 70%, a STON server suffices to set up a peer-to-peer -peer connection. If a STON server cannot establish the connection, ICE uses a TURN server. When a TURN server is used, this server relays the media stream between the peers. In this example, this peer asks the STON server what is its IP address and port. The STON server returns the peer's public IP address and port. This peer will do the same. A peer-to-peer -peer connection can be established and a media stream will flow directly between the peers. However, in some cases, a direct communication cannot be established. In these cases, a turn server will be used. The turn server relays the media stream between the peers. The use of a STON server is preferred above a TURN server because a TURN server uses a lot of processing power. In a WebRTC application, the STON and TURN server locations can be specified. There are public STON servers available, but use them for prototyping or non-mission critical applications. To create a peer-to-peer -peer connection, the peers must also exchange several types of information first, for example, their external IP addresses and ports, their codecs and media types that they support, when to initialize, close and modify the communication sessions. This exchange of information between peers is called signaling, and usually an external server is used called a signaling server, which can store this information, for example, in a database. Signaling methods and protocols are not specified by the WebRTC standards. When Alice initiates a peer-to-peer -peer communication with Bob, Alice is called the local user, aka caller, and Bob is called the remote user, aka callee. The information sent from Alice's browser to a signaling server is called the offer, and Bob's browser information sent to a signaling server is called the answer. 
The offer and answer are written in a so-called session description protocol format. Alice initiates the peer-to-peer -peer communication. Her browser creates an offer which is sent to a signaling server and stored in a database. Bob can retrieve this offer from the signaling server. When the offer is received, an answer is created and is also sent to the signaling server. Alice can get this answer from the signaling server. A peer-to-peer -peer connection can now be established. To demonstrate the WebRTC signaling process, use the following application. This is my Chrome browser and I have opened two tabs, both opening the same web page. Let's assume this is Alice's browser. She creates an offer. This is the offer. This offer needs to be sent to Bob. Let's copy this offer. Let's assume this is Bob's browser. Paste the offer in this input box. And now create the answer. Press this button. Here is the answer. Copy this answer. Let's go back to Alice's page. This is Alice's page. Paste the answer in this input box. Press the button Answer. And now a direct communication is established between Alice and Bob. Let's do a chat. Here is Alice. Press the Send button. You can see the text here is Alice. Let's go to Bob's page. You can see he has received this message. Hi Alice. Press the Send button. You see the text Hi Alice over here. Let's go back to Alice's page. You see the message Hi Alice. You can also transfer files. Here's an image of Bob. Let's send this image to Bob. Press the Send button. The file is uploaded. Let's go to Bob's page. And Bob has received the image. Press this link. Bob's image is now downloaded. You can also see each other, but I have disabled my camera and audio when making this video. I have now given you a simplified explanation of what WebRTC is and how it is used. If you want more information about WebRTC, see these links. I have created a proof of concept to test if mass authenticated messaging can be used as a signaling implementation for WebRTC. Go to this web page, select this endpoint, enter an encryption key, for example, my secret, display logging in console, yes, open my console window, and press the button create a channel. The offer is created and uploaded to the Tangle. Send this link, root, and encryption key to your partner. Your partner will open this link. Enter this root. And the encryption key was my secret. I want to see the display logging in the console. Open the console. Press the button connect to a channel. While this happens, go back. After you have shared this information, you can press the button connect. Let's go back. The offer is now extracted from the Tangle. It has created the answer and is now publishing the answer to the Tangle. Alice is waiting for the answer. Bob has now uploaded the answer to the Tangle and is waiting for the connection to be established. A direct connection is established between Alice and Bob. Let's chat. Hi, here is Alice. You see the message over here. And Bob has received the message. If Alice presses the disconnect button, 
Let's go back to Bob's page. Bob sees this message. Your partner has disconnected from the channel. Please press the disconnect button. Press OK button and press the disconnect button. They can now both start a session again. Let me explain what has happened. This is Alice and this is Bob. Alice's browser creates an offer. It also generates a new seed. The seed and offer are attached to each other, separated by a semicolon, and published to the tangle. The link, root, and side key are shared with Bob, and Bob can retrieve the seed and offer from the tangle. In the meantime, using this seed, the root is calculated, and at regular time intervals, the tangle is checked if the answer is available. After this information is retrieved, the answer is created. With this seed, the root is calculated. The answer is published to the tangle using the root. If the answer is available on the tangle, it is retrieved using the root. A direct peer-to-peer -peer connection can be established between Alice and Bob. Here are my lessons learned. You can use mass authenticated messaging as a signaling implementation for WebRTC. However, it takes too long to establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection because publishing the offer and answer to the tangle takes too much time. In a production-like environment, this is not acceptable. But for prototyping or just for demo applications, it's perfect. When using MEM, it is recommended to compress your data, which will decrease the time to publish this data to the tangle. For example, you can use the LZ string compression JavaScript library. See this link. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.